um, faithful, 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 faithful. Uh, that God has brought us together. We were figuring it, trying to figure it out. And when you get to the point where you have to figure out <laughs> how long you've known someone, uh, you know, you just kind of need to forget about it. But uh, Mississippi, <coughs> thank you. Thank you for being here. And Mississippi has come and helped me every year as I began to establish these conferences year after year. And I want to say that I believe that those of you, some of you, are in and out, going places and doing things, but you come back to this conference. And I believe that God continues to touch each one of you in some special way. Are you got other things you could do other than come to these conferences. So I thank you for coming because that means you've got good memories and the Lord touched you. And so in a special way, it was, became very special for you. But Patricia Amen. Yay! Yeah. Her life has changed. Her life has changed dramatically again. <laughs> Since she was here last year, and we want to hear all about it. Yes. Yep. Emma, can y'all hear me? Well, have you ever felt like you was a goose in a hurricane? Well, that's how I felt this year. You talk about change. The Lord spoke to me at the beginning of this year. He said, um, you know, we've been in the suddenlings for a long time, haven't we? Suddenly God's like doing things, things are changing in our life, things are not the same, are they? Amen. And I can truly say as I stand here today, there's nothing in my life the same as it was last year. Can you say that? We're going from glory to glory. You're not on the one. We're just going to move that in. Amen. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Yes. But, you know, we've been hearing for a long time when a change is coming. How many, how many of you have been hearing changes coming? I know uh, Brother Scott's been preaching it for a long time. I mean, he told me, he said, change, 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 change is coming. Brother Scott, change is coming. My life is not the same. Your life is not the same. I'm telling you, when the wind of God begins to blow, things happen, don't you? Change comes. And sometimes we don't understand until we get there. You know, we heard last night, Brother Pete, uh, now we're talking about the river of God, and I want to be able to flow rivers of living water. Amen? And we thought, we, you know, the river is flowing. It really is. And everywhere that the river flows, there's healing. Yes. yes. There's life changing. And so out of you, out of your belly, you're going to bring healing. You're going to bring, you're going to bring healing to your cities, to your families, to your ministries. If you will allow the Spirit of God to begin to flow out of you. Amen? Amen. So here today we hear Brother uh, Marvin talking about, you know, uh, process. You know, I don't know about you, but I, I have not liked process. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, we hear, we hear about process, but they stop there and they don't tell you what's going to happen when you start going through the process. <laughs> book that can tell us how to get through the process, but we do. It's right here. But Amen. you know what? I, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that today because I've been through a process and some of it's been good, some of it's not been so good, but all things has worked for good. Amen. And so Amen. Amen. Some of it's not been good, so good, but it's turned out far good. Yeah. Amen. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Because we got to believe what the Word of God says. He said, even if it's bad, it's going to turn out for your good. Yeah. Even if it's meant for bad, bro, Scott, God's going to turn it for you good. So we've had things that look like it was meant for, for evil, but God said, I'm going to take that evil and I'm still going to turn it for your good. Amen. See, we yes. got to just trust God in the process. Amen? Yes. And so God has taken us somewhere, and we've been on a journey to a place called there like Abraham, but we, we didn't know exactly what it looked like or where it was until we get there. Amen? So we see things a little clearer today than we did back, Brother uh, Scott, back when we started this journey, don't we? Amen? And so I just want to talk to you a little bit today 
uh, about the journey because a lot of us are, are on a, a journey and we're in a process and, and the girls that are with me can tell you they've all been through some things this year. There's change coming. Uh, the ministry's changed. I'll have a new husband. Uh, you know, uh, when the Lord told me last year, he said, uh, the year before, uh, my husband died. And, he, and in December of 2014, the Lord told me, he said, uh, next year's going to be a year of new beginnings for you. Well, you know, I got excited about that because I was believing for God to heal my husband, raise him up, we were going to move to Hattiesburg and have a work in Hattiesburg and, and do great things for the Lord and take healing to the nations. I mean, if you know, it didn't work out just quite like that. <laughs> and, and, but that's what I desired. That's what I wanted to see. And before my husband passed, he looked at us all and he said, it didn't turn out quite like I had hoped it would, you see. Because on his uh, deathbed, he uh, had a visitation from the Lord. And the Lord spoke to him and said, um, in two weeks, he said, I'm coming for you. Come on now. Now, my husband asked the Lord, said, I'd like to know when you get ready to take me home. Yeah. He said, I'd like to know that, Lord. And so uh, the Lord came to his bedside and told him, he said, uh, son, he said, your work is over. And... Uh, your journey's complete. He says, and I'll be here for you. I'm coming for you in two weeks. So when um, I went back into the room, the doctor just told us that my husband was not going to make it. And I said, well, how long do we have? And he said, two weeks, two to three weeks at the most, three weeks at the most. And so when I went back in the room, my husband said, sit down, I've got something to tell you. And so when he began to tell me he had a visitation of the Lord, and he said the Lord was coming for him in two weeks. How do you argue with God? How do you argue with God when your work is over? And you have finished the race? Amen? And so, anyway, I looked at him and said, Honey, you, you believe that? He said, I sure do. I sure do. I said, well, we're going to go home and we're going to get ready for the coming. You're home coming. Amen? And that was the greatest two weeks of our 47 years in marriage. It was the most glorious time. And he released us in to do, complete the work that God had called us to do. And he said, honey, he said, my work is over. My journey is complete, but yours isn't. He said, I want you to move to Hattiesburg, and I want you to keep the work going there. We're still in the process. Even in dying, we're still in the process. Change. Change was here. It wasn't what we thought it was going to be, he said. We just got to trust God in the midst of the process, amen? Because God knows the end from the beginning and the end from the end. He knows everything that's going on in our life. We just got to trust Him, amen? And so he looked at me and he said, now this is three days before he died. Now I want you to know that this, this just took a Holy Ghost man to be able to say this, full of the Holy Ghost. He looked at me and he said, honey, God's going to bring you another husband. He's going to bring him to you quickly. That wasn't something I wanted to hear. <laughs> Not being happily married to a man for 47 years. You just don't want to hear that. You want to hear that, you know, you're going to be healed and delivered and set free and we're going to go do the work of the Lord. We did the work of the Lord together. But see, the Lord told me, He said, this is a new season. And so He said, honey, get ready because God's going to bring you a husband quickly. And he even told Marvin, you know, our, our friend Marvin, he said, Marvin, I just told Pat, he said, that uh, God's going to send her a husband. And I don't care if it's a day after, a week after, a month after, a year after, I want you to support her. Now, I'm just weeping. I didn't want to hear all that, but you know what? God has a plan. It's in the process. It's in your journey. God knows what he's doing. And then he said, I know the plans I have for you. They're for good and not for evil to give you hope for the future with an expected end. God wants us to leave here with an expected end. Amen? I'm not, I was not <laughs> gifted for singleness. I just wasn't. I've been married since I was 16 years old. That's all I knew. Amen? God, family, husband, but I wasn't looking for a husband, but God told me two weeks later, he said, I'm going to send you a husband. And I remarried a, day, a year to the day of when I married my husband, my first husband. Had the most awesome husband. He's watching uh, us today. He would be here had he not had some business to tend to. 
But God knows what he's doing. And when he said, I'm going to send you a husband that's going to lavish you with my love and his love, I didn't have to go looking for him. He found me. You know, yeah. awesome. these girls can tell you he's an awesome man of God. Yes. But in the midst of the process, sometimes we, we just have to walk in faith. We've got to trust God. We've got to adhere to the Lord. And we've got to hear what God is saying. You know, during the process, it was painful. It was a very painful season in my life to lose my husband. Carolyn, you know what that feels like. I didn't know where I was going from here, but I had to trust God. There's some of you in positions right now, you don't know where you're going, but you just trust in God, don't you? Amen. And so, in the midst of this process, that's all we can do. Forty-seven years I've served the Lord, Carolyn. You know, how long has it been since you've been so long? A long time. 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 But the scripture's over in 1 Peter, if you want to join with me there. Let's look at the scriptures. This is a scripture that a lot of us don't like to read. In fact, I, you know, um, I knew a lady had a church and it was called Long Suffering. <laughs> But then, 
we find that it's a different type of struggle. Being a woman pastor, there was a lot of struggles, especially being in the southern, in the southern belt here. You know, they don't believe in women pastors. But Carolyn, we were forerunners, and I told these girls, I said, it's easy for them because we took the we took the hit. We, we took the hit for them. Now, you know, all of these women over here are ministers of the gospel because we stood strong because we stood in our calling. We made our calling and election sure, and now we paved the way. And these young women in here, and men, you've done the same thing. Prophets, when you know you was a, your dad was a prophet when prophets weren't cool, was he? And uh, you was a prophet when women prophets surely wasn't cool. And, and I was called to be an apostle when, when uh, pastor, being a pastor was hard, but when you get a title of being an apostle and you're a woman, that's even harder. And so I was telling her, you know, you just got to know that you're called. You've got to be assured. He said, make your calling and your election sure. Because if you don't know that God's called you, you cannot stand against the persecution. You cannot stand against all of the things that are going to come against you. Amen? Because you're going to suffer some things. I mean, many times I, I wanted to give up. I told my husband, I'm not getting back in that pulpit. I'm not going back to Africa. I'm not doing this. No, I can't take it no more. He said, yes, you are because you called of God. He said, you called of God. You can't get that assignment from the Lord. You can't back up on God. What are you going to go back to? I have nothing to go back to. so severe and so hard in your life and it hurts so bad and about the time that, that you get healed over one thing you go back out and you give it all that you got Come you on. give it all that you got you pour yourself back in you open yourself back up and what's going to happen again there's another hurt there's more suffering that you've got to go through do you hear what I'm saying today yeah. more disappointments you're going to have you're going to question yourself you're going to ask God, you sure you call me to this? God, are you sure you call me? you got to know that you know that you know. He said, make your calling and election sure, Paul said. If you will make your calling and election sure, when you go through the fire, you won't stand. Come on. Amen. Come on. When you go through the tribulation, you will call out. Yes. When you're facing things... You will be able to stand strong in the midst of it. When we've had church splits, it broke my heart. Most of the time it was by people that we loved, people that we poured our life into, people that we spent hours counseling with. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That's some of the things we have to suffer, Carolyn. We gotta love people in spite of it. We gotta learn how to love. And you see, you can only love it if, if, if the, the Lord, the love of God, He is love. That's right. That's right. And if we, oh my God, love covers the multitude of sin. Love never fails us. And it's His love. There's times I was fearful. Look, I'm coming to a new level in my own life. I'm fearful of some things right now. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the unknown, but I'm trusting God with it. Yes, amen. I'm trusting God. Sometimes you just have to do things afraid, Carol. Amen. You just do it because you know God called you to do it. Yes. I'm standing here today trembling because I know God called. I'm not here because I want to be here. I'm here because He wants me to be here. Amen? Amen. You're not here by your own choice today. You're here because He ordained you to be here today. Amen? Amen. Come on. You have been bought with a price. I have been bought with a price. My God. We're facing some things, folks. We're facing some things. But we don't trust God in the process. I don't even know where to go today. I told Brother Marvin, I said, everything I studied this week, everything I prepared this week for this conference, I left every note home. <laughs> and if you get to, the, get to the conference and you say, God, everything you gave me, I, I can't even remember. Yeah. I looked at Brother Marvin, Mar, uh, Marvin, I said, Brother Marvin, pray for me. 
Holly Dahl, my new song with me said good. <laughs>
before you start speaking, you better make sure you have done her from God. There's too much proper lying in the house of God. There's too many people saying, I, like Brother uh, Marvin said today, saying God said when God said, I ain't said that. That's right. God has not said that. We've got to make sure. It should, I mean, you should tremble when you stand up and say, God said it. Uh -huh. Boy, that's a mouthful when you stand up and say, well, let me tell you what the Lord said. Look at what God showed me. This is a common, everyday, every five second thing. Well, God showed me this. God showed me that. And God does show us things, doesn't he? Because we're led to the Holy Spirit. We should be, amen? And I'm not putting that, but I'm talking about major things, amen? But it said Daniel went to his house, and he, he said, look, i got to have some help here. we got to pray. we got to hear from God. I mean, my life's on the line here. Our life's on the line right here. The church's life is on the line right here, right now. Yeah, Y'all yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There is an urgency about this thing. Yeah. There's an urgency about this. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't take it lightly. We have sat back. We let them take prayer out of school. We let them do this. Oh, now we've got oh, in our land because we stood back and we didn't say anything. I've already been called about doing a wedding. I'm not going to do it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. They're already out there looking for pastors like you to marry them. No. Come on. we got to stand. You hear what I'm talking about? Yeah. I said, I love you, but I am not going to compromise the faith to do it. It is wrong. I repent. Amen? Amen. So we're, we're being faced with that right now. And so, anyway, this is what he said. This is what he needed them to pray. That they would desire mercies of God of heaven concerning this secret. That Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. He said, we need to pray. We need the mercies of the God of heaven concerning this matter. We need the mercies of God of heaven concerning yes. this election. Yes. We're in a, we're standing in the balance right now Amen. of judgment yes. and mercy. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We're standing in the balance of judgment and mercy. I don't know about you, but I'm crying out for mercy. Amen. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it, Carolyn. We don't. America don't deserve it. You know why? Because we truly have backslid on the Lord and we left our first love. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. Mercy. Amen. Even the thieves on the cross when they were being crucified called out for mercy and God showed them mercy. Amen? Amen. That's the only thing that's going to help America today is if we begin to pray and we call out and ask the God of heaven for mercy concerning this matter. Yeah. And Daniel and his fellows that this should not perish with the rest. Let me tell you something. But so that the church won't perish with all the rest of them. Just because the world turned their back on God, America turned their back on God, there's some folks in the church that's not turned their back Come on, on God. Amen. There's a remnant still in the house of God that hadn't turned their back Amen. on God. That's right. Lord. But we're going to suffer with the rest of them if we don't understand it. Amen? Can y'all believe Amen. that today? So here, Daniel was fixing to be executed with the rest of them if he could not. In fact, the, the order was already given, but he asked for mercy. He asked for to give him time to be able to come up uh, uh, to hear from the Lord. And then it says, the verse 19 here, um, uh, verse, uh, chapter 2, it said, Daniel, um, then uh, was the secrets revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Mm -hmm. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. See? God's going to hear and answer our prayers. His hand is not shortened that he cannot heal. His ear is not deaf that he can't hear the cries of his people. Amen? Amen. Only God can turn this thing around. Yes. And it said, then, then was the secret revealed in Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. Yes. It's not by might, nor by power, but it's by his spirit. Amen? Amen? And he said, and he, he's giving glory and honor to God, who is all wisdom and might. He said, and he changes the times and the season. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. What are we worried about? Right. 
We've got to trust God in this changing time. That He's going to do exactly what His Word said. Amen? He is able to remove kings and set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and the secret things, and He knoweth what is in the darkness. Let me tell you something. I'm praying in, I, in the Spirit. I said, God, reveal what's in darkness. And I'm praying in the Spirit now. And so God can begin to stir that up. And so whatever's being done in secret, in darkness, the Holy Ghost is about to pull the cover on it. Y'all get ready for the ride of now to November. It's going to be a, a, a ride of your life. And I'm telling you, I'm getting off of the roller coaster ride because I ain't riding and I'm just going to watch God's glory. Amen. 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 Just rejoice with the Lord every time you hear that He reveals those hidden things and watch the miracles because you are going to witness miracle after miracle after miracle. The Lord told me, He said, you will begin to hear of miracle after miracle after miracle. How the Lord is just going to unveil, 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 unveil unto truth. I'm telling you, your truth is revealed. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We're going to see it. It's going to happen. And I'm not telling you no one's going to win because I'm telling you I'm not calling nothing. I'm not call Only God's calling the shots here. It's all legal. But only God knows what he wants in the White House. And he's going to do it if the church will begin to pray. If we'll begin to intercede, we're going to see God do some things. But it said, he revealeth the deep and the secret things. What is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hath given me wisdom and might, and hath made known unto me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast made now made known unto us the king's matter. You can know the Holy God. He can reveal it to you. And he, he can reveal that's his will. And you just pray it through. Because when you begin to intercede and, and you're in travail and you begin to push this thing through and your womb and the spirit begins to open up, it's going to open up a release for the purpose of God to be done in the earth. You hear what I'm saying? Your travail is opening up the womb of the spirit so that his purpose will be revealed. Amen? And come forth in the earth. You're going to push. There's some of you pregnant in here with intercession. It's time to deliver. Come on now. It's time for delivery. See, I've been pregnant for an awakening. For 47 years, I didn't even know what the awakening was, but I knew that what we were seeing in the church was not all what it was supposed to be. We need to see a, a move of the Spirit of God that's going to bring in the harvest, where they're going to run to the altar, where the convicting power of the Holy Spirit's going to hit them, and they're going to run and fall in the altar. Come on. Well, we don't have to have all that. Let me tell you something. Godly sorrow works with him. That's what's wrong with this nation now. We've been told, oh, that's all right. You can live like that. God right. loves you. <coughs> We've compromised with the devil. We got right on in the bed with that harlot. Yes, you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. What about you? But I'm divorced. Yeah. I ain't married to that. I'm not in this world. Amen. 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 So that's what's wrong with the church. We have compromised. It's okay. My daughter goes to a church and they have homosexuals all in that place. And I'm like, really? And they're not even preaching? I mean, they're, you know, they're comfortable. They feel people love them. God loves them too, but He wants them saved. He wants them delivered. Amen. I love them. I've won many to the Lord. But 
it's time to get back to your mail. There's someone in here that's called to be intercessors and you've left your post. You're not interceding. You've got to get back on your post. Don't worry about who's going to get in the election. Just begin to pray. Yeah. Begin to pray about the purpose, the purpose of God. Birth it through. God will have who He wants if you'll pray, pray and intercede. Amen. Do you believe that? Yeah. Oh, glory. There are some other things I want to bring out. Oh, yes. Before she travailed over in Isaiah 66, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who had heard such a thing? Who had seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travails, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause them to bring forth, says the Lord? Shall I not cause, uh, shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, says the Lord? He's not brought us to this point to shut up the womb. Carol, you've been interceding. You're going to see this thing grow through. You're going to see it grow through. Sister, you in the red back there, you're going to see it grow through. There's some more of you in here birthing, praying, believing God. You're going to see it grow through. Amen? Come on now. There's things in your life. I'm talking destinies in you. I had a vision. I want to tell this to close, but I was in the uh, travail in the church, in the children's department. And all of a sudden, I seen myself in the labor room. Because I hadn't prayed like this in a long time, to, to that extent. And all of a sudden, I seen pregnant women travailing in labor, bent over in the labor pains, and they were bringing forth. We're fixing to see some things brought forth. The wound is open. We're dilating the church. I mean, there's a remnant right now that's birthing Carolyn. And then I saw on the other side there was women that said, I can't do this anymore. I can't carry this anymore. I just got to go. And so they went off to the, abort, the abortion side. Don't let the enemy cause you to abort in this season. Don't abort your destiny. God has put inside of you destiny. Birth it out. Can we stand up in here? I don't even know how to close this out. I said, God, I don't even know what to say up here other than what you told me.